It's not probiotics, it's not collagen, not bone broth, it's not colostrum. It is straight up glutamine. Now, the reason that I feel this is so important for people when you're looking at gut health is because we live in a time when we are stressed, when we are compromised, when we are always recovering. So before we used to look at the research on glutamine and say, yeah, maybe it has a fitness element to it, yada, yada. But now we're starting to understand that when we are stressed or when we are recovering or when we are injured, glutamine becomes so imperative to our gut, to our immune system and so on, that it will literally break down muscle tissue like that to pull it. It is a non-essential amino acid, which means that we don't need it from our diet, but it's also, there's some fine print there. It's a conditionally non-essential amino acid, meaning that the moment we become depleted in it, it's very hard for the body to keep up with the manufacturing of it, so it'll do whatever it needs to get it. Now, the thing is, is what does that have to do with our actual gut health? Well, it has to do with our gut barrier. Science is really interesting. After today's video, if you're interested in gut health, I put a link down below for Thrive Market. The reason I say gut health is because you can sort by different diet type, you can sort by fiber, you can sort by different things that you're looking to get food for, right? So when you're looking at gut health, you can even search gut health. It'll bring up foods that are tagged as good for gut health. And Thrive really puts their best foot forward with this stuff. They're not flying by night. They absolutely do their homework when it comes down to good quality stuff. So that is a 30% off discount link for your entire first grocery order. So we're talking about things that don't have polysorbate 80, don't have carrageenan, don't have these things that are notorious for disrupting our gut barrier, being negative when it comes to gut health. They actually have good sourced ingredients with properly sourced food items, making it available to people that can't go to Whole Foods or can't go to specialty stores. So 30% off your full grocery order plus a free $60 gift and it gets delivered to your doorstep. So that link is in the top line right underneath this video. So I'll open with a study that was published in the journal Parenteral and Enteral Nutrition. Now this looked at the gut lining and mucosal layer after a bowel obstruction. What they found is that when subjects consumed glutamine, they didn't have any damage to the gut mucosal layer and they recovered from bowel obstruction significantly faster. Now in that particular case, they were looking at rodents because they were able to create damage faster. But we've seen evidence in humans when you look at like endurance athletes that have the actual gut damage that occurs from endurance work. Now that's a pretty esoteric kind of niched audience, right? People that do long endurance work. But the bottom line is that we know from other evidence that when you have a burn or you have an injury, glutamine gets zapped and a lot of it because you need a lot of glutamine for those immune cells. So since the gut and the immune system are so closely tied together, researchers are saying, well, wait a minute, what's going on here with glutamine? Why is it so good for these things? Why is it used in recovery? Well, it turns out the gut cells are turning over all the time. Okay, they are constantly turning over and they require a lot of energy. Turns out that glutamine is literal direct energy for these cells literally for the enterocytes, for the actual gut cells and the epithelial layer, they are energy. So much so that they soak up the glutamine, the glutamine gets converted into glutamate and ultimately goes through this whole cycle of what's called alpha ketoglutarate, aiding the Krebs cycle to literally create more energy at the cellular level. The glutamine, as much as I don't wanna get super fancy and scientific, I will for a second, becomes a nitrogen donor. So the nitrogen and the carbon in the glutamine become a fuel for this cell to go through DNA and RNA synthesis, meaning it can actually replicate. And remember, these are fast turning cells. They turn over very fast because they're constantly getting damaged and, and all this different synthesis that has to occur because they're working all the time. Now we know from literature that A, our immune system begins in the gut, but B, if the gut barrier is damaged and these cells are damaged, we have more gut permeability. The more gut permeability we have, the more lipopolysaccharides, which are toxic molecules that are produced by gram-negative bacteria within our gut, the more that these leak through into our bloodstream and trigger an inflammatory response. Not just like, hey, here's one little inflammatory marker from something bad. We're talking probably the most documented way that we have inflammation is from this leakage of gram-negative bacteria's toxic molecules that they secrete, lipopolysaccharides. So if I haven't scared you enough, that really wasn't my intent, the goal is 
hey, how do we improve our gut barrier? How do we do this one good thing? How do we use glutamine for gut health? Part of it comes with only using it when you need it. Okay. Remember, it's conditionally non-essential. So if everything's fine and dandy, you're eating enough protein, you're gonna have the ability to take in and create glu or ultimately create glutamine, right? But the moment that you're stressed, you're sleep deprived, most importantly, if you're training hard or if you have an injury or you're sick, if you get sick, you zap your glutamine. That is a good reason why people probably have a harder time maintaining muscle when they are ill. Okay, remember that it's not about taking glutamine to build muscle. That's not the goal here. That's not what we're after. Glutamine can protect the muscle breakdown when you are ill or when you are depleted, not because it's directly aiding the muscle, but because it's giving your body what it needs from an immune system standpoint and from a gut barrier integrity standpoint to not have to tap in to the muscle. So that is exceptionally important there. The other piece that is very interesting is now we're starting to see that glutamine is a precursor to glutathione. From a detoxification process, this becomes very important. Phase two detoxification from the liver is closely tied in with what we do with the gut too. So being able to maintain good gut health and have adequate amounts of bile production so we can remove and move toxic things through the gut faster to be excreted, that becomes very, very important as well. Now, what would I recommend in terms of dosing for glutamine? Most standard glutamine dosage is about five grams. There's no real need to go above five grams. I don't see many use cases of going more than maybe 10 grams a day, unless you were an endurance athlete that's really depleting their gut. So there's some evidence that glutamine might help with what is called mucin-2 expression, which helps you create more gut mucus, that mucosal layer. There's evidence to suggest that like when you start running longer than 15, 16 miles, you can deplete that mucosal layer. Another time that you deplete the gut mucosal layer is if you are fasting. So if you're fasting, the gut mucosal layer, for some reason, we don't really know why, degrades during the fast, probably because it's pulling energy from there to a certain degree. So fasting might be a good time when maybe you add five grams of glutamine at the end of your fast or possibly even during your fast. Okay. But for the most part, you only wanna use it when you know you're stressed or depleted. And for those of you out there that are concerned with the whole idea of glutamine feeding certain things, like potentially having an effect on tumor size and everything like that, there is some evidence there too, like some not so good things that can grow in our body can feed off of glutamine. But at the end of the day, the literature doesn't necessarily suggest that glutamine supplementation would fuel this more because these are demand-driven processes, not supply-driven processes. So these are things that no matter what, they're gonna find a way to get their glutamine. So you could even make an argument that by supplementing glutamine, you actually protect your muscle tissue from it pulling glutamine from there. So it's a little bit of a tough situation, but you should probably only use glutamine when you feel depleted or extra rundown, just because why add extra if you don't need it? As always, keep it locked in here on my channel. See you tomorrow.